In this video, I will be reviewing and discussing the materials that I used to draw this adorable little meerkat. By the end of this video, you will know all about pastel map, pan pastels, and Derwent Light Fast colored pencils, and how to use these materials together to create very realistic wildlife art. This meerkat drawing started on a piece of colored pastel mat with a very quick layer of pan pastels. If you want to check out how I laid this base layer in, be sure to check the card and the notes below for a link to my other YouTube video. The pan pastel layer that I put in established the value relationships and the color, but it didn't give me very much structure or texture. So I'm using the Derwent Light Fast Colored Pencils to come in and add both that structure and specific texture to my piece. Here I've slowed the video down to show you that I've switched colored pencils. This is a Derwent drawing pencil. It's a very opaque white and it's great for laying down really bright whites. And I'm using this to render the texture of the sand. Because the pastel mat is so toothy, the white Derwent Light Fast colored pencil also laid down whites right over the top of color I had already applied. But the Derwent drawing pencil was ideal for this because I was able to lay down more material at once and it was a little thicker and waxier. Once I have the entire background laid in and to the level of detail that I anticipate it being finished with, I'm coming into the body of the meerkat and I'm working on finishing out the details. Here I'm working on the face and I'm drawing the fur on the face hair by hair. I'm typically starting with the darkest hairs, I'm working into the mid value hairs and then I'm laying the lightest hairs right on top. Here I'm working with the white light fast pencil and I'm able to lay the white hairs right on top because the pastel mat is so toothy. Now this is a great example for why I put the background in first. Because the background is completely finished, I can lay the little white hairs right over the top and I'm able to keep that information in the foreground without having to draw the background around each individual hair. It saves so much time being able to draw the lightest value hairs right over the top of a dark background. All colored pencils are going to have a bit more sheen than your pastels or pastel pencils. And so in this drawing, as I'm working on it, the light is bouncing off of some of my darkest darks so that in this particular video, they don't appear quite as dark as they do in reality. This is just an effect of the light bouncing off of a shiny surface. But when you see the finished drawing later in the video, you'll be able to see how dark those darks actually are. And it's important that you push your darks as dark as they need to go so that your lightest hairs and those little whiskers will pop right off of them. While you're watching this drawing unfold, I'm gonna take a minute to talk about the supplies I'm using and why I chose those. So I'm working on a piece of pastel mat and you saw in the beginning that it was a colored piece of pastel mat. I'm not 100% sure which color this is. It's either buttermilk or maize, but it's a yellow tone that is on the neutral side. And there are so many different colors that you can choose from when you are working with pastel mat. I picked this yellow color because I thought that it would complement the purple that I was planning to put into the background really well, and it would help me bring out the yellow tones in the meerkat's fur. Pastel mat is designed to hold layers and layers of pastel without requiring fixative in between layers, so it's great at holding material on its surface. But I still use a piece of tracing paper just to rest my hand on so that I'm not smudging my work when I am applying colored pencil and my hand is resting on the surface. I think one of the reasons that pastel mat has been adopted so warmly into the colored pencil community is because it holds the material on the surface tightly, but it's also textured enough to allow you to lay light values or light colors right over the top of dark values. Here I'm laying in those little white hairs on the chest and I'm able to achieve a really nice sense of texture because the dark from the background is shining through the little spaces between those hairs. And if I were to do this on a traditional 
white cotton paper, I would have to draw around each tiny individual hair, which is just not really time efficient. The pencils that I'm using are great for wildlife art and they are also super compatible with the pastel map. These pencils are the Derwent Lightfast colored pencils. They are, as the name suggests, a highly lightfast set. They're a very high grade professional level colored pencil and they're somewhere in between a traditional oil based colored pencil and a traditional wax based colored pencil. I feel that they are ideal for wildlife because they are so good at drawing fur. They hold a sharp point like an oil-based pencil would, but they lay down more material at a time, which is more characteristic of wax-based colored pencils. I love the color range for the Derwent Lightfast pencils. There are now 100 colors, and they come in such a wide variety of colors with really bright colors that would be great for drawing birds, and also a great selection of neutral colors so that you can pick just the right color for those individual hairs that you're laying down. I think this combination of supplies is awesome for rendering fur, but if there are some supplies that I should try that you think work better than the Lightfast pencils on Pastel Matte, make sure that you let me know about it in the comments below. I would love to try some new materials. I appreciate you taking the time to stop by and watch this video. See you next time.